Good morning, hello and welcome to the CNBC TV 18 HDFC Sky Studios. Today is D-Day. It's been a grueling six-week-long election in which over 65 crore people have voted. And today we get the final results. Most exit polls are predicting a straight term for Prime Minister Narendra Modi, with quite a few of them projecting a two-thirds majority for the ruling BJP-led NDA. Stock market saw a sharp 3.5% rally yesterday. And of course, the wanted PSU space jumped 8%. Uh, today is when we will find out the real numbers, and the numbers will start trickling in from 8 a.m., add up to the, what the exit polls have showed us. If Prime Minister Narendra Modi is re-elected, as is likely, it would mark the first time since 1962 that a sitting PM gets re-elected for the third time. It's going to be big and it's going to be historic and we're going to stay with you through the course of the day from start to finish. I'm Prashant with me, my colleagues Surabhi and Nigel. Guys, hi, good morning. Hi, good morning, Prashant. Good morning, Nigel. Big, big day lined up ahead. And I think there's one word that's been the buzz over the last many weeks, right? In the market and beyond, that's continuity. Yeah. So the exit polls are telling us that we'll probably have, probably is the word, political continuity. And the market is telling us that we may just end up having a little bit of sector continuity. The same thing, themes that have worked in the last one year, they are still the dominant and, uh, you know, big favorite themes. Well, explains why we had such a bazooka reaction to the exit poll yesterday, right? And going by today's gap up as well, you put it together, we'll be up close to around 1,000 points ahead of the official verdict. So let's see how it goes from there. I, you know, I said it on Saturday evening, 1,000-point week coming up. So if you get <laughs> this gap up, I mean, 1,000 points today, and then you'll start to wonder what now, yeah. I mean, beyond today, right? So, but, Prashant, that's the thing. So <laughs> 700 points happened yesterday. Yeah. So you're saying... Just about 300 today, best case? I think it could be bigger. It, it could, could be, be bigger. bigger. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'll tell you why. Let's just sort of kick it off and tell you what the sort of trade setup overall is looking like. Looking like. By the way, there is the global stuff as well, which yeah. we're completely we'll ignoring and for good, <laughs> good reason, right? Now, uh, so the counting of votes uh, begins uh, and, uh, you know, it'll start at 8 o'clock. Numbers will start trickling in at uh, 8 o'clock, 8 a.m. this morning. Uh, and we'll start to get the leads, etc. Remember, first of all, uh, you know, the postal ballots are counted and then constituency-wise, there are... Uh, you know, voting will sort of, uh, the counting will begin, numbers will be tallied, it'll be communicated to the uh, sort of election, uh, political party representatives, election commission officials, and I mean, those are the leads that you will start to see coming in from 8 o'clock. Process actually is very fast. If you go by what 2019 and 2014 look like, I mean, we should have a fair idea by 11 a.m., actually even by about 10.30 or so, we should have a fair idea of what this election is looking like. Now, uh, markets will watch your final re results match up to the exit polls, right? And what did the exit polls show? Very sort of broadly, BJP poised to win 325 seats, NDA poised to win 360 to 400 seats. That is essentially what the exit polls showed us, and that's what basically triggered this big rally as far as markets are concerned. Now, final results, if they are better, and I said this yesterday as well, you look at 2019-2014, Exit polls got the direction right, the broad wave right, but they underestimated the winner's uh, sort of tally uh, by a big margin. So if you go by that, it's possible that the final numbers are actually even better than the exit polls. And markets will welcome that. It will add co confidence to what's already happened and the big gain that we've seen. Any weaker result than projected, I mean, I think, uh, you know, there is a bit of a risk here. But if you want to really think about it, below what level is the, does the market start to pay attention and start to get worried and we'll start to see weakness, I would say for the NDA, if that number falls below uh, 325, right? I mean, then the uh, market perhaps sh starts to get worried. Or actually, distill it even further. I mean, as long as I think the BJP by itself is around the 285, 290, 295 kind of numbers, I mean, I think it, the market even then should be okay, even though internet there could be a little bit of dis disappointment. But, you know, full absolute majority... The numbers, of course, I mean, uh, can vary depending on what uh, comes through today. <coughs> but if they sort of manage that 290, 295 numbers on their own and NDA at about 325 plus, I think we should be okay. So broad kind of way to think about it. Now, yesterday, the market saw a big rally. The Nifty was up 3.5%. You had the Bank Nifty, which was up 4%, the PSU Bank Index. And I said this yesterday morning at 8 o'clock as well. The one space to watch is PSUs. Uh, and, and what's done well... I mean, I think that momentum there should continue. It's also one of the highest beta spaces, the PSU space. The figures that we got after uh, sort of close, right? In cash markets, FIIs pumped in 68.50 crores. I think uh, I sort of tried and I went, went back and tried to look at this is the highest since when, it's since a long time. I mean, I think, I think we have to go back all the way to March, early March or something. But that's a big number which uh, started to come in. And many were talking about Prashant Kemka, for example, who's managed global money in his past role, said... 
uh, that FIs should start to come in, uh, come in from uh, Monday itself. So we'll see if these numbers, uh, provided, the, provided the other numbers, the results tally holds up, uh, looks good. Now, on the FII short positioning, there are still shots in the system left. I mean, it's not fully gone. So if you look at index futures, the number was 3.18 lakh net, net short on Friday. As of yesterday's close, that number is just under 2 lakh contracts net short. So, that, which basically means that there is about 2 lakh contracts waiting to be covered. Now, not all of it is a view. Not all of it is basically naked short positions. It could be, a lot of it could be hedging as well. But in any case, it gives you a sense that the market is sort of net short and there is more covering to come. Just a quick bit on the overnight markets. It's been okay, but I mean, Nasdaq is up half a percent. S&P is kind of flat. Uh, you've got, uh, but the big sort of moves have come in in two spaces. One, the yields of bond yields have cooled off substantially. 10 basis points lower on the US 10-year. Dollar index is down half a percent. And then oil prices. Oil prices fell 4% and we are at about $78 per barrel. Uh, actually, 77.91, under 78 now this morning. This is big. So, you know, and, and this kind of give, will give a lot of confidence. It's big positive for macros here on a day like today, especially oil marketing stocks were all flying 8-10%. So keep an eye out on, the, on that, just purely based on these big fallen oil prices. Where do we go from here? I mean, it'll depend on the numbers and we'll talk more about this. I won't spend too much time on this. But, you know, broadly, if you look at extension levels, you look at essentially the move that we've seen and projected higher for the Nifty, target should be in the region of about 23,742. This is very near term, right, even today. And supports come in at about 23,200. That is on the upward sloping trend line. For the Nifty Bank, similar kind of numbers, 51,500 and then 52. Uh, 52,082 and supports come in in the gap area between 49,112 and about 50,092. But as I said, more on this in terms of uh, intraday kind of strategy and what to do. I will be with you through the course of the day as those numbers start to come in and markets start to trade. Sorry. Oh, absolutely, Prashant. There's so much to digest. But yes, you're right. Global queues do take a bit of a backseat. Yeah. On, on crude, the reason, I mean, just to point out the reason behind that big fall that we saw overnight was that there's a lot of chatter about whether the market will start getting better supplied now yeah. because now OPEC is saying that a lot of the supply cuts that were in force, maybe, you know, OPEC members can start to winding them up from October. So that's led to, uh, you know, some money coming off the table in the oil markets. But uh, just to get back to the rest of the global picture, so, you know, equities have been largely flat, both on Wall Street, Asia is very mixed this morning. And uh, the fall in the U.S. yields that Prashant alluded to, in fact, yesterday the fall was, uh, you know, uh, very, very marked. You couldn't ignore it because the U.S. 10-year went below the 4.4% mark. Today morning, it's back above uh, that level, 4.4% thereabouts. And that's because of weak manufacturing data that came out. Uh, the ISM manufacturing index for May, it slipped further into that, uh, you know, a territory below 50, which obviously is talking about the weakness there. 48.7 was reading coming and it was below expectations as well. So therefore, that move in the U.S. money markets. Now, back home here, obviously, you know, all of this right now is, is sort of out of the window. Center stage is what happens in the next two, three hours as those uh, result numbers start trickling in. Now, yesterday, a lot of people were hoping for that dip uh, to come in and then enter the market on the dip. But the market simply gave you no opportunity. We opened gap up 800 points. We closed up around 730 points. That was the extent of the move yesterday. The VIX was down about 15% as well. The VIX is now back uh, you know, in that zone of about 20, 21, thereabouts, closer to 21 than 20 right now. <clears throat> and the big, big question really ahead is whether the bulk of the short covering move is over or whether that will be one engine that keeps propelling the market higher if the numbers go along expected lines. Because yesterday, uh, you know, the most of it, bank nifty futures, bank nifty options, uh, you know, nifty futures, barring nifty options, I think for the better part of the FNO market, there was massive FBI buying uh, pretty much across the board with a lot of put riding happening in that zone of 20, uh, 23,200 know, to about 23,000. Uh, 400, 500 as well. So that's how the FNOQs are changing. Just on the cash market position, uh, the numbers again on your screen for reference, 6,850 crores of buying coming in. Domestic institutions, they've been supporters throughout in the last so many months. So I just brought up the FPI tally for the year as a whole because that's the big question. When is that big foreign money coming in? Was yesterday a sign of things to come? And it's been patchy throughout the year so far. Uh, March was a good month, but May was a major dip down about 26,000 crores in May. Yesterday, first day of June, we opened the tally on the positive side, and that's the critical question. Where does that June bar move? And because of the FPI buying that came in yesterday, I mean, look at the money markets, just rounding off with a money market check. The rupee uh, was seeing an upward drift yesterday. There was a you know, nice 
0.4% sort of an appreciation. The rupee closed at 83.14. Let's see how the currency moves as those numbers roll along. And of course, for us, I mean, the bond yields are at around that 7% mark. They're tracking a lot more than just the electoral outcome. But uh, the chatter, even in the domestic bond market, is that perhaps, you know, we should have a very benign move, maybe sub-7%, and that could be a further leg up to bank stocks, uh, if at all they needed one. But uh, I guess, uh, whichever way you're looking at it, I guess uh, technicals of the market are, are looking good, Nigel? Well, that's right. You know, if you're looking for a positive outcome globally, you've got that as well, right? Mm -hmm. Crude prices lower, the yields are softer, and in fact, you had economic data as well that was fairly so soft. The big points that I'm looking at, yesterday the FIs bought in cash. They covered some uh, positions in the index futures. But the clients as well, interesting, they booked some profits. And they took some longs off the table as well on index futures itself. And the question is, part of this mandate, is it in the price? You know, with that 700-point rally yesterday, and today you'll get close to around 200 points approximately. So we'll get, you, get to a scenario analysis as well towards the end of this chat. First up, what are the FIs doing yesterday's trading session? Well, they added long positions, close to 66,000 long positions, and they covered close to 56,000 shots. That's a swing of close to 1.2 lakh contracts in a single trading session. And that's why the long positioning, which was at around 14%, that went all the way to around 28%, Todd. But it's more interesting to see what did the clients do. So the FI short positions, yes, they have come down from around 3.2 lakh to a little sub that 2 lakh contracts, Todd. But the clients, well, they were aggressively net long. They're still aggressively net long. But in terms of profit taking, they have taken some money off the table because the client positioning, the long positions have come down by close to around 1 lakh contracts odd. 3.1 to around 1.9 lakh contracts. Next up, what about the stock futures? We made this point yesterday as well. Yes, the FIs are short in index futures. But on stock futures, actually, the long positioning is at the multi-month high out there. So there's a bit of a hedge that's taking place out there. And the clients as well, they continue to remain net long on stock futures, though they have uh, you know, trimmed it a little bit out there. That's the most important graphic play that I'm bringing up for you on the screen. 2014, 2019, getting into the election verdict, the FIs were big buyers. This time around, and particularly in the last two months or so, well, they turned sellers. And that's why year to date, we're down close to $2.5 billion approximately. So that number needs to turn around. If that's the case, that's going to be the driving factor that takes us higher from here. The FI cash market buying, as well as the covering in the index uh, futures itself. And you'll say it's an emerging market phenomena. Well, probably yes, but there is an element of this election verdict that the FIs are waiting for as well. That's a broad scenario analysis that I'm looking at. You know, what's factored in? A number around 350 for the NDA. Well, that will be factored in with the SA 700 plus 200 uh, point uh, rally that we're likely to see. Further upside, if you see the NDA get around 370 plus, then you're giving it a further kicker in there. And maybe, in fact, you know, then we climb, we move towards the 24,000 odd mark. But the fear is, you know, if the NDA gets up this, you know, 340, 350 approximately, then part of the good news is in the price. So in the near term, so just in the near term, we'll see some profit taking all. So let's see how it goes. But I think the FI cash market buying, that's the big factor. That's the driving factor. And that's going to take us higher from these levels. As Absolutely. Well. And that's something that the market is really looking at. By the way, uh, you know, guys, I just uh, slip back in history. Actually, in the last two elections, uh, the market hasn't popped that much. I mean, it's been between half a percent to about a percent or so in the previous election. On the day of the result, the moves mm. happen later. The last massive pop was 2009, which is when we had the double digit yeah. gain on the yeah. index. But the last two uh, counting days, just to place on record, have been fairly quiet for the market. Will it be any different today? We'll find out. Yeah. No, you know, but uh, and it's a fair point. The point is that if, you, if the numbers are what the exit polls shows, uh, right? I mean, there is, uh, today is just one day. Beyond yeah. that, you got, you know, you don't have to do everything today in that yeah. sense. I mean, I think yeah. that is also important to keep at the back of your mind. It's yeah. not as if you'll miss today, then uh, there's nothing to do for the next uh, couple of weeks and couple. <laughs> I mean, there is a full five years, right, uh, of, uh, of, of hopefully stability, etc. So I think uh, it's, it's, I think one has to keep that in mind and not have that FOMO that mm -hmm. if today miss ho gaya, so by 9.15, 10 o'clock, by the time results come in, I'm not in, <laughs> then it's a lost cause. I don't think that is the way to uh, look at things. No, no, absolutely. There's so much ahead that I'm in, uh, in terms of uh, agenda, yeah. policy, so on and so forth. It all starts unraveling.